The Teal Mask is part one of the hidden treasures of Area Zero and shows us traveling to the land of Kitakame. Inspired by the real Japanese location Kitakame, the events of this DLC are happening abroad from Paldea. Wupa take on their traditional forms as seen in Sinnoh and Johto, and in fact the trailer is filled with Johto Pokemon. Additionally, there are statues of Hisui and Growlithe, and language matching that of old Hisui on signposts that lead us to believe that this land is south of the mystical Sinnoh region. This in line with the real world equivalents, and both Sinnoh and Kitakame have mountains at their center, with Sinnoh of course having Mount Cornet and Kitakami having a mountain with a face, potentially of a giant monster, possibly a Pokemon from the ancient past. But what is this creature? Have we seen it before? Before we get into that though, let's first discover the hidden treasure of whatnot. That was a terrible segue. Thank you to whatnot, today's sponsor. If you scan the QR code on screen or the link at the top of the description, you're going to get £10 free credit added to your account. What is whatnot? It's a live buying and selling platform where I have been selling Pokemon cards and selling them pretty cheaply. We're seeing packs that should normally go at a certain price on the shelf go for half the price over on whatnot. With many of you doing very well across Crown Zenith, EV Heroes, and 151. Next month, I'm actually traveling out to Japan courtesy of whatnot um, to Pokemon Worlds, and I'll be visiting a number of the Pokemon Centers out there, picking up exclusive Pokemon Worlds and Pokemon Center merch, and then bringing it to my WhatNot store. So make sure that you've got that stream favorited so you get notified when I go live. Use the link in the top of the description or the QR code on screen and get £10 free credit to your account. I get affiliate kickback, so it supports me. You get some hopefully free Pokemon products. And of course, thank you to WhatNot for sponsoring this video. Where I am once again joined by Lumius Post, who helped me stitch this mystery to do with the giant face of Kitakame together. We'll be breaking this down, and Toby and I do recommend that you check out this video video on the connections between Hisui, Senjo, and Kitakami. To briefly summarize it, we truly believe that the area we are visiting in the Teal Mask is an area south of Sinnoh, which we happen to know from Professor Oak's Pal Park dialogue is in the same country as Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn. Furthermore, there was once a nomadic group of lore keepers that traveled north of Johto and Hoenn to the land that back then was known as Hisui. These dragon masters and lore keepers were pursuing knowledge of Arceus, and were leaving behind their language in the Tenobi ruins, the Salacion ruins, and of course, even in the ruins of Alf. Though any number of these clans are connected, the Kimono Girls, the Dragon Keepers, the Sea Folk people, it seems that the core of this particular group were the Celestica people as described in Legends Arceus, and from which Kogita hails. If they traveled north from Johto or Sinjo, as stated in the old verses you can find in Legends Arceus, then it is very likely that they came through the area of Kita. Kami, and that means they very likely encountered this giant mountain that seems to have the face of an ogre or giant. It's even quite possible that they encountered Ogre Pon himself. Ogre Pon is this DLC's central Pokemon, and while Pon is a suffix of the word meaning cutesy or sweet, Ogre is a very specific kind of word, multi-layered like an onion. Ogres are European creatures of folklore, so to grind your bones into bread. Well, actually, that would be a giant. Ogres? Oh, they're much worse. They are like onions. Oh, of course. But giants and ogres are often conflated in media. And while its Japanese inspiration is clearly that of an Oni and Kitakame Oni Island, the connection to giants and ogres is not lost when we look to the mountain face. Clearly, it's not made of a natural formation, but then it doesn't seem to be human crafted either. So then what exactly is this mountain head? And where does the ogre in Ogre Pond's name come from? To get to the bottom and top of this, let's take a look at gigantism in Pokemon. Well, giants is a word that comes up in the mythos of Hisui, with the plates of Arceus referring to their creation as being the power of defeated giants infused into plates. And we do know that there certainly are giant Pokemon, and Eternatus and Gigantamax Pokemon were introduced just one generation ago, and even talked about in Gigantamax Melmetal's dex entry how it is a Cyclopean giant. Titan, Totem, and Noble Pokemon are also a thing, with these all being Pokemon that outsize Pokemon of their respective species. These are due to Ultra Wormholes, or Arceus, or Herba Mystica, respectively, and this just shows us that Pokemon infused with life energy can grow exponentially. Even in the anime, we've seen some truly tremendously big Pokemon, and then we do know that Pokemon will shrink down to fit inside their Pokeballs. Yet, with all of this size changing in the Pokemon world, we have never seen a Pokemon as giant as a mountain, but a Pokemon that seems to be this tall is mentioned once again in the Galar region. 
A theory I was never truly able to materialize in the days of Sword and Shield was that of the Giant of Galar. The idea being that the whole region itself used to be a giant that fell into the sea long ago, with the giant's cap, seat, mirror, and foot being area names located across the wild area and the crown tundra. And at its foot, a giant Pokemon, Regigigas, sleeps at level 100. Regigigas, of course, being the king of the Regis, the legendary Titans, another form of giants in Pokemon. Regigigas has a Pokedex entry suggesting that it used to move the continents themselves, helping tow them and shape the earth. But what if before those continents were continents, they themselves were creatures like Pokemon from which the earth formed around? Imagine for a moment the idea that the regions of the Pokemon world and the mountaintops that they're formed around were themselves once giant colossal creatures bound to the earth. If this is the case, then perhaps Regigigas in a time long ago worked as minions of Arceus to rope and pull down these giants and infuse their powers then into the plates, building out the Pokemon world from on top of them. Though the text on the Arceus plates do read the word defeated, another word for this would be fallen. Perhaps they did fall into the sea after being defeated by the true power of Arceus, a Pokemon whose current Pokemon-like form is a form that Arceus has chosen, as learnt in Legends Arceus. Its true form being incomprehensible compared to the Pokemon that we train and keep as pets. If so, perhaps before the age of Pokemon, there were other creatures like this. If this is true, then Regigigas would be on the foot of this giant, whose body and head run south to Kitakami, which would be south of the Coronet Mountain Range. You can even see how the Coronet Mountain Range goes south. This would mean that Mount Coronet is the spine of this giant, so Spear Pillar is sitting on top of the spine and thus its feet would lie in snow point. This is also very similar to how we see in the Gala region and the Crown Tundra specifically that Regigigas is found in the giant's foot. So it seemed these Regis helped Arceus tow these giants or continents with rope much like Luke Skywalker on Hoth. Nice, and it makes sense that they towed the continents because they like they like they towed them because Regigigas is at their toes because they sleep at the feet of the giants. <sighs> Uh, still, back to the theory, it's possible that these fallen giants fell into the sea, creating the regions of the Pokemon world. This ties not only into the implied lore of the upcoming Terrapagos, who represents the world turtle, a creature that carries the world on its back, nor just the lore of Paldea itself, a region that looks like it belongs on the back of a Terrapagos, as you can see by its outline. But it also ties into what we know about rocks in the Pokemon world. From Megastones to Z-Crystals, Terra Shards to Wishing Stars, or from the Tundra to the ore of Hisui from which we make Pokeballs, all the way back to the stones of Pokemon Black and White. All across the history of the Pokemon world, geological mementos of each of the region have contained great energy that allows them to transform Pokemon into different variations or, of course, amplify their powers. It's possible that once, before Ogapon was what it was today, its energy came from the husk of a creature from a primordial time before people and Pokemon existed. A time when only Arceus and the Regis of old helped shape the earth by felling these giant creatures. Regidrago has a Pokedex entry referring to the fact that it was made from crystallized dragon energy. Perhaps there was one of each of these giants for each type. If so, then we must wonder the role of each of these giants, including the one that Ogapon calls home. If its back truly is where Spear Pillar is, then it must hold some special significance. Perhaps this was the first or the last of the giants that Arceus fell, and from here it would choose a spot on the giant's back to commune with the humans that would live eventually in this region. This actually explains the Pokedex entry of Hisui and Typhlosion, which states, said to purify lost forsaken souls and guide them to the afterlife. I believe this form may have been influenced from the energy from the sacred mountain towering at Hisui's center. This would also explain how Rotom, a pretty technically advanced Pokemon, is able to exist in the Coronet Highlands naturally. The ghostly energy that creates life seemingly from nothing and created the mythical stones of the Pokemon world is all left over from the regions that were at one point very much alive themselves in an age before recorded history when these plates were being made. Of course, there is something else. By the time humans would arrive in Kitakami and see this mountain face, it would seem special, but by all accounts would just seem to be a giant Pokemon. As you move into the Senjo ruins just south of Kitakami, you will find these statues of Rhinon, or at least 
they look to be right on. Statues like this date all the way back to Gen 1, but modern iterations of them seem to depict Pokemon that don't actually exist. The shape of Rhydon was also used to just be a representation of several bestial Pokemon in lieu of overworld sprites. Is it possible that as folks traveled back south to Johto, these carvings changed over time and just eventually people started thinking that they were supposed to be Rhydon, so they started carving Pokemon that looked more like Rhydon, very similar to a game of telephone. This bit is admittedly much more speculative. Of course, this is just part one of the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Part two is the Indigo Disc, and me and Lumio's post have already done a video about that. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you to Whatnot for sponsoring this video, and of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye-bye. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, and a special thank you to the big patrons of the month, Jed Rubin, Charmander Anzibal, Anthony Lee, The Elgator, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you so much.